Hello, children. It's story time with Professor Lanterman once again, because some of you still seem to think that bipolar junction transistors are current control devices. Today, I will be reading from Small Signal Audio Design by Douglas Self. This is the best book I'm aware of that covers things like microphone preamplifiers and mixers. Let's start on page 65. Bipolar junction transistors. There is one thing to get straight first. The bipolar junction transistor is a voltage-operated device. What counts is the base emitter voltage, or VBE. Certainly, a BJT needs base current to flow for it to operate, but this is really an annoying imperfection rather than the basis of operation. I appreciate this may take some digesting. Far too many discussions of transistor action say something like a small current flowing into the base controls a much larger current flowing into the collector. When the base is forward biased by taking it about 300 millivolts above the emitter, charged carriers are launched into the base region. Since the base region is narrow, the vast majority shoot through into the collector to form the collector current IC. Only a small proportion of these carriers are snared in the base and become the base current IB, which is clearly a result and not the cause of the base emitter voltage. IB is normally just a nuisance. Every bipolar transistor obeys the Ebers-Mole transistor equation shown in figure 3.3. So there we have our Ebers-Mole equation. With startling accuracy over 9 or 10 decades of IC, which is a pretty broad hint that we are looking at the fundamental mechanism. In contrast, beta varies with IC, temperature, and just about everything else you can think of. Beta, or HFE, is the ratio of the base current IB to the collector current IC. It is not a fundamental property of a BJT. Never design circuits that depend on beta, unless, of course, you're making a transistor tester. Here are some factors that affect beta. This should convince you that it is a shifty and thoroughly untrustworthy parameter. Beta varies with IC. First, it rises as IC increases, reaching a broad peak, and then it falls off as IC continues to increase. So that's something people talk about beta droop. Beta increases with temperature. This seems to be relatively little known. Now, I should mention that this equation has several temperature dependencies. VT depends on temperature, and IS also depends on temperature. So I have a lecture in my ECE 4450 analog circuits for music synthesis class that talks about dealing with those various bits of temperature variation. Oh, this is interesting. A very good refutation of the beta-centric viewpoint of BJTs is given by Barry Gilbert. So that's a reference to a chapter by Barry Gilbert in this book, Analog IC Design, The Current Mode Approach, edited by these folks. This is from IEEE Circuits and Systems Series 2. This is like a British version of the IEEE. I'm reading from page 12. The BJT is often viewed as a current-controlled current source, in which the finite common emitter current gain beta is regarded as a key parameter in determining circuit behavior. It is often assumed to be more or less constant with collector current IC, so presenting the transistor as essentially linear in nature. This beta view diminishes the emphasis on the far more important role of VBE, which is often taught as being only an approximate characteristic of the device. The words about 700 millivolts for a typical silicon transistor are to be found in too many textbooks. In fact, the relationship between IC and VBE is at the very heart of the BJT. That's from Barry Gilbert. Do you really want to argue with Barry Gilbert? Yes, I'm making an appeal to authority, but I really do think I'm on solid ground here.